Hi guys, I'm Sam, the Fat Middle-Aged Man, and today I'm going to teach you how to build this beautiful contraption, which of course is just my own take on the hover bike in Space Engineers. There are many others out there, but mine is by far the best one yet. I'm also going to be giving you a first-hand look into my shipbuilding process and demonstrate how I personally go about designing new ships. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you an alternative version of this ship that will absolutely blow your mind. Or, you know, make you at least raise one of your eyebrows. If that sounds like your idea of a good time, be sure to hit that big juicy like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Okay, so as mentioned at the start of this video, we're going to be designing a new ship today. This is a one-man transportation vehicle. Small, relatively cheap, easy to alter and suit your own needs. So my initial vision for this was to help me mark out resource spots on the solo survivor world, just so that I could move faster than the 10 meters a second when you're running, without breaking the bank too much in terms of time, resources, building materials. Obviously, as with all new builds in the game, it evolved beyond the initial scope with me just adding in these two small reactors you can see here, which, to be honest, at the point in the survival world that I'm at, I couldn't even power anyway. But given how nicely the whole thing turned out, I decided it might be useful just to create a video, share this with you guys and see what you thought. So let's go over here to the start of the build and I will go through this step by step. Okay, the first thing here is to set up the workstation. So in this case, I'm building something in small grid. So I like to start with uh, a large grid rotor, which is just buried in the platform here, with a small grid head. You can see that just there. Uh, and then from there, I just build the head up a couple of blocks and fill out the holes so that we don't fall in while we're working on the design. So this is entirely personal preference. Building straight off a of small landing gear would work just as well, or just simply free balling it out in space, whatever floats your boat, you know? Okay, so next we actually start off the build and I'm coming in first with a small battery, as you can see, just on top of the armor blocks there. This is my emergency battery, just to jump start it if I run out of uranium. And on either side of that, we stick a remote control block just on the front and an antenna on the back. So these are going to be handy for those times when, you know, you accidentally fall out of your ship whilst it's hovering just a little bit too high for you to reach. And in the survival world, I'm obviously using no jetpack, so it's going to come in handy. Just for reference, by the way, anything colored in red is something new that we've added to the build between each section. What I'll do, I'll respray everything to the default gray color so you can see the difference. And then as we add new things here, like you see, I'll color them in red. All right, moving on here, we've added in our control seat, uh, which is going on top of the antenna block here, not on top of the battery. So the actual pinpoint for the control seat is the antenna. Uh, we've decided to stick the ore detector just in front of that, just so that we don't forget to put it in later on. And on the back of the control seat, we have our first small Atmo thruster. So there's going to be another one, but the first one we just stick right on the back of the seat. Now, obviously one thruster isn't going to get us very far. So we're going to slap another one on the side of the ore detector, which we come around here. Okay, so the reason I've stuck it on the side of the ore detector there is it just keeps it low enough when you're in the seat so it doesn't block our vision. A couple of small cargo containers on either side and two small reactors on the back of them, just next to the control seat. We will only be able to interact with the cargo blocks from the front of the build. So be sure to keep those conveyor ports clear. Obviously those conveyor ports are the access to the reactors as well. Okay, moving on, I've decided to add in some armor blocks to help keep this thing together. So we've gone with some 2 by one by one base units just underneath the seat. It's the same on both sides. And we've tapered it off at the back a little bit just to round that around the antenna. Just also give it a bit more protection. Uh, we've also rounded off the cargo containers with some 2 by one by one slot tips. Uh, they will come in handy later as extra snap points. Okay, and at the back here, we've just gone for a full light armor block coming off the side of the thruster uh, with a slope just on top of there. And then going down, I wanted another slope, but I wanted to make it more of a curved angle instead of just the straight one. So I decided to go with a half slope inverted corner, then a two by one by one tip just underneath. So this gives you like that arch looking effect. 
which, you know, I really like the look of. It just breaks it up a little bit. Okay, sticking with the back of the ship for a moment, I knew we needed to add in some gyroscopes somewhere, so I figured I'd try and squeeze them in here. So what we did is we finished off the curved part with a 2x1x1 base on the bottom, which we'll later use to add in some magnetic plates as landing gears. And then on the side, another 2x1x1, just a, a 90 degree angle from that, uh, on the back of which we've added our gyroscopes. So this is going to keep them out of harm's way. They're always at the back of the ship. So unless you're running away from something, they're always going to be protected. Uh, I also decided to add in some more armor to box in that thruster a little bit. Gives it a bit more of a layering look. We've used some half corner blocks here and I've put an LCD in the center just to break up the shape a bit. LCDs are a whopping 50 PCU each though. So if you're hurting for size, consider swapping that out for maybe just a half armor block. Okay, so at the same stage here, I decided to add in some half slopes here, just as anchor points for the next stage. I've left a gap here for reasons that will become clear very soon. Okay, back to the front of the ship. I knew I wanted to box the seat in a bit, just to make it look safer, even if that's just a visual thing. Uh, originally, I did go with half blocks, but I thought that the magnetic plates here looked a bit nicer. They are PCU intensive, I think they're about 35 PCU each. So if you wanted to swap them out for half blocks instead, that totally works. The next thing we did is we added these 2x1x1 tips just to the side of the cargo containers. That gives us an angle point, an angle point? An anchor point for our barred windows here. I was going to use glass and that would probably look just as nice for the same cost. So if you were rebuilding this, you'd go right ahead and use glass if that's your preference. Uh, lastly here, what we did is in this gap that I left, I just stuck in an offset light. This is meant to look like our way to climb aboard the bike. So I've decided to add in a light here to stop it from looking too bland. Also, it does make for quite a nice beacon when you're lost in a storm. Okay, now for the very front here. So we obviously need some spotlights uh, just so we can see where we're going in the dark and that sort of thing. But given the lack of room and the fact that I still wanted to be able to access the cargo containers, I opted for the offset spotlights. And I've got to say, I'm quite happy with the results. I could have put them in at a different angle, but I kind of like the way these are. Normally, I don't like seeing the exposed conveyor ports, but the way I've done this, it kind of looks like the air intake grill you'd find on the front of a car. And I think it really adds to the look. At this point, I also remember we added a remote control block, uh, but we had no way to see where we were flying. So we actually need to slap a camera on. So I figured I'd just pop that right on the front here. Okay, now for the finishing touches. I noticed the front part of the ship looked a little unsupported, so I added some half slopes to the end and connected the two sides together. I also wanted a bit of symmetry, symmetry in the little. I also wanted to give a bit of symmetry between the front and the rear of the ship, so I did an LCD to the front and braced it with the small corner pieces. I also added two more LCDs to the inside of the cockpit area because the control seat only comes with one screen by default. And sometimes having more information is a good thing. I then tacked on some more barred windows to make it just feel a little bit more secure. Uh, finally, I disconnected it from the base here. And as you can see, I've added in our landing gears, just a magnetic place on the bottom. And also I noticed that we hadn't armored up the base. So I just threw some armor plating on there just to protect the battery and the antenna from any damage. All right, with that, we're actually done with the main part of the build. So the last things I did here were all based in the control panel. So first off, I always like to group everything and give everything appropriate tags so that when it's connected to the base, you know which type of thing you're editing. First major thing we did was update the LCD screens. So each one of these has got their own thing. I've also labeled it here. So this one shows the weather. And I've just colored it in this orange color here so that we get this nice little glow effect. And the left one shows the gravity. We also put one on the front, which is just simply the faction icon. And the one on the rear, the rear sign, all we did for that one is change it to the construction panel. I also added this alternating red lighting to the side, which looks nice and also doubles as like a visual distress beacon. So all I've done there, these two lights here, yeah, the blink length of 
and one of them has an offset, whereas the other one doesn't. So I then went through, grouped up all the magnetic plates that we're using for the safety rail, and I turned them off so that we get this nice red lighting down the edge rather than the blue one or the yellow one when it's turned off. So the final thing really was the paint job, which is nothing too fancy. It's just the dark gray or the black with the heavy rust texture, which yeah, I think works like a charm. Don't go anywhere just yet though. I've got some exciting stuff still to show you. Before we get into that, a really quick word from our sponsor, me. So I only very recently started creating content for YouTube, but already I know that this is what I want to do for my full-time career. Unfortunately, the powers of B aren't on my side at the minute. This is where you come in. I would like to officially invite you to press on the big thumbs up and subscribe buttons down below, as well as making sure to tickle that bell to make sure you stay up to date with all my latest content. Uh, once you've done that, feel free to leave a comment to tell me what you liked or disliked about the video, or even just to say hello. Every single interaction you have with this video helps push it out to more potential viewers and massively helps grow my channel. In addition to YouTube, I also try and stream on Twitch whenever I get a spare chance. I have a growing Discord community, as well as my own Space Engineers server for community members. So, you know, feel free to drop in and say hi. Links will be down in the description below. I've also recently launched a Patreon page for anyone who would like to support me on there. At the time of this recording, you can do so for as little as one of the Queen's Pounds, which is about $1.50. Every penny goes a huge way to helping me achieve my goal of getting paid to play video games. Also, a huge thank you to everyone who's already subscribed. It really does mean the world. Anyway, that's enough rambling for me. Let's get back to the video. So, that's it for version 1. I think it looks pretty sweet. And that's said with absolutely no personal bias whatsoever. I will say, however, that after a couple of test flights, it isn't perfect. Issues I've identified so far. Uh, number one, it only has vertical thrust, so it can be quite messy to fly unless you're quite good at piloting helicopters, which I am not. Uh, number two, it has a whopping 1,105 PCU which for a single person transport ship is pretty hefty, especially considering it doesn't have any guns. And point number three, uh, doesn't have any guns. So whatever should we do about these issues, eh? Looks like it's time for the big reveal. Here it is, version two. Better in almost every way, the armed stealth variant of the nuclear hoverbike is exactly what you want from a single occupant transport vessel. We've got ample forward thrust. We have a sleek, sexy paint job, complete with chrome window bars. And we even have Gatling guns. Best of all, we have our own astromech droid. The hell to Alt F4. All right, not really, but you gotta say it looks pretty close. If you wanna see how I went about converting the initial hoverback design into this much more advanced one, Click the video on screen now. Otherwise, have an excellent day, keep on being awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.